Aztec Civilization The Aztec Empire, 1345 to 1521, covered at its greatest extent most of northern Mesoamerica. Aztec warriors were able to dominate their neighboring states and permit rulers such as Montezuma to impose Aztec ideals and religion across Mexico. Highly accomplished in agriculture and trade, the last of the great Mesoamerican civilizations was also noted for its art and architecture. The Aztec civilization, with its capital city at Tenochtitlan, Mexico City, is actually the most well-documented Mesoamerican civilization with sources including archaeology, native books, codices, and lengthy and detailed accounts from their Spanish conquerors, both by military men and Christian clergy. These latter sources may not always be reliable but the picture we have of the Aztecs, their institutions, religious practices, Aztec warfare and daily life is a rich one and it continues to be constantly expanded with details being added through the endeavors of 21st century CE archaeologists and scholars. Sometime around 1100 the city-states or Altapetl, which were spread over central Mexico, began to compete with each other for local resources and regional dominance. Each state had its own ruler Retilatoni who led a council of nobles, but these small urban centers surrounded by farmland soon sought to expand their wealth and influence so that by circa 1400 several small empires had formed in the valley of Mexico. Dominant amongst these were Texcoco, capital of the Acalhua region, and Azcapotzalco, capital of the Tepanec. These two empires came face to face in 1428 with the Tepanec War. The Azcapotzalco forces were defeated by an alliance of Texcoco, Tenochtitlan, the capital of the Mexica, and several other smaller cities. Following victory, a triple alliance was formed between Texcoco, Tenochtitlan and a rebel Tepanec city, Tlacopan. A campaign of territorial expansion began where the spoils of war, usually in the form of tributes from the conquered, were shared between these three great cities. Over time Tenochtitlan came to dominate the alliance, its ruler became the supreme ruler, the Huitlatok, High King, and the city established itself as the capital of the Aztec Empire. The empire continued to expand from 1430 and the Aztec military, bolstered by conscription of all adult males, men supplied from allied and conquered states, and such elite members of Aztec society as the Eagle and Jaguar warriors, swept aside their rivals. An Aztec warrior wore padded cotton armor, carried a wooden or reed shield covered in hide, and wielded weapons such as a super-sharp obsidian sword club, macule weedle, a spear or dart thrower, otlatl, and bow and arrows. Elite warriors also wore spectacular feathered and animal skin costumes and headdresses to signify their rank. Battles were concentrated in or around major cities, and when these fell the victors claimed the whole surrounding territory. Regular tributes were extracted and captives were taken back to Tenochtitlan for ritual sacrifice. In this way, the Aztec Empire came to cover most of northern Mexico, an area of some 135,000 square kilometers. The empire was kept together through the appointment of officials from the Aztec culture's heartland, intermarriages, gift-giving, invitations to important ceremonies, the building of monuments and artworks which promoted Aztec imperial ideology, and most importantly of all, the ever-present threat of military intervention. Some states were integrated more than others whilst those on the extremities of the empire became useful buffer zones against more hostile neighbors, notably the Tarascan civilization. The Aztec capital of Tenochtitlan, today beneath Mexico City, on the western shore of Lake Texcoco flourished so that the city could boast at least 200,000 inhabitants by the early 16th century, making it the largest city in the pre-Columbian Americas. These inhabitants were divided into several social strata. At the top were local rulers, Tetuecton, then came nobles, Pipleton, commoners, Massahulton, serfs, Mayek, and finally slaves, Tlacotin. The strata seem to have been relatively fixed, but there is some evidence of movement between them, especially in the lower classes. Not only the political and religious capital, Tenochtitlan was also a huge trading center with goods flowing in and out such as gold, greenstone, turquoise, cotton, cacao beans, tobacco, pottery, tools, weapons, foodstuffs, tortillas, chili sauces, 
maize, beans, and even insects, for example, and slaves. The Spanish invaders were hugely impressed by the city's splendor and magnificent architecture and artwork, especially the Templo Mayor Pyramid and massive stone sculptures. Dominating the city was the huge sacred precinct with its temples and monumental ball court. Tenochtitlan's water management was also impressive with large canals crisscrossing the city which was itself surrounded by chinampas, raised and flooded fields, which greatly increased the agricultural capacity of the Aztecs. There were also anti-flood dikes, artificial reservoirs for fresh water, and wonderful flower gardens dotted around the city.